A quiet revolution taking Europe and even the world by storm, the electronic cigarette. In Europe alone, it's estimated there are over 7 million vapors, a term they prefer to the word smokers. Inhaling vapor, inhaling nicotine, but not tobacco and other chemicals common in cigarettes. For this man, it's nothing short of a miracle. Before this invention, I tried at least four or five times to quit, and by using the electronic cigarette, I was able to, in just a few days, stop cigarettes altogether. An electronic aid to help kick one of the most dangerous of personal habits. In France alone, it's estimated one in five people smoke. In Europe, that figure is an alarming 29%. Health officials warn that one out of two long-term tobacco users will die as a result of their habit. Philippe Prell is a doctor and tobacconist. He led a campaign by 100 doctors to support the electronic cigarette as an alternative to smoking. With the electronic cigarette, we've managed to eliminate tobacco's three big poisons, which are tar, carbon monoxide, and the fine particles which lead to cancer, heart attacks, and chronic bronchitis. And after this, people are asking if there's anything dangerous in them. And I find this ridiculous. If we want to compare the dangerousness of the electronic cigarette with other products, if I place tobacco all the way on the left, and after that alcohol and then fat products, followed by sugar products, then I realize that the electronic cigarette is next to the fruits, vegetables and fish. The danger is really very, very little. There are pesticides in some vegetables, there are heavy metals in some fish. That is the level of danger we are at with the electronic cigarette. Despite such strong medical support, the European Commission is still hesitating on how to legislate the e-cigarette's future. Considered a tobacco product, its sale will be banned to minors. There's also talk of higher taxes on a product which is about a fifth the price of regular cigarettes. At this e-cigarette shop, this long-time smoker is trying one for the first time. I've been smoking for 40 years. I've tried everything. The patch, chewing gum, going cold turkey, everything. And there were times when I stopped smoking completely. But each time I went back to the cigarette, because what I missed, especially, was the gesture. The taste. I like the taste of tobacco. I like the smoke. And that's what I missed. And what does he think of vaping? Frankly, I'm impressed. I feel like I've found these pleasures once again. And you feel it very fast. There's no smoke, there's no odor. You feel very quickly that it's another way of smoking. Despite such positive feedback from smokers, the European Commission in its tobacco directive has put restraints on the marketing and selling of the e-cigarette. They've demonized this product by saying, we don't know what's in it, this famous principle of precaution. We never use this principle of precaution regarding the cigarette, so why are we using it for the e-cigarette? It's being demonized. Why demonize a product many doctors claim is a lot safer than smoking? For e-cigarette supporters, look no further than lobby pressure from the big pharmaceutical and tobacco companies who want to get their hands on a booming product. In France alone, the number of specialized e-cigarette shops has gone from 300 to 1,500 within the past year. For the head of France's Office of Smoking Prevention, the problem for the European Commission is that there are no in-depth studies on the long-term effects of vaping. The EU directive is obsessed by the danger of this product, when that's a microscopic problem. To sum it up, smoking is like going the wrong way on the motorway. Using the electronic cigarette is like driving at 140 kilometers when the speed limit is 130. If everyone did that, there would be more accidents that we could measure on the scale of the danger. But compared to going the wrong way in a motorway, the risk is minimal. Sébastien Bougnol is one of the founders of an e-cigarette association. He claims the electronic cigarette has no place in the EU tobacco directive since it contains no tobacco. He supports legislating this new product but worries that Brussels will place so many constraints as to make it completely useless in the battle to quit smoking. He's been cigarette-free for over a year. La, la particularité de la cigarette électronique 
The difference with the electronic cigarette is that it's a grassroots invention, that it came from its users, from artisans and small producers. It's not something that came from big multinationals pouring lots of money into research and development. Its invention was almost spontaneous. And at the beginning, no one, from the big pharmaceutical companies to the tobacco industry in France, believed in the electronic cigarette. Nobody believed in it until just last year. Europe's electronic cigarette industry is estimated to be worth about 500 million euros, a far cry from the 91 billion tobacco business in cigarettes alone. But in France, tobacco shop owners argue the new EU tobacco directive has hit them hard. Cigarette prices have gone up and new EU legislation has eased cross-border cigarette shopping. Cyril Jeje warns that high taxes on cigarettes has also led to a growing black market. Our trade is fighting to get the exclusive distribution rights for the electronic cigarette with nicotine, since it falls under tobacco shop legislation to have this monopoly. And I think this is the future for us. Ten years from now, cigarettes won't be the same. They'll be graded and upgraded differently following their evolution, because this little product that was invented in some Chinese garage was monopolized by the people. And now the tobacco industries are investing a lot in research to make cigarettes less dangerous, to make cigarettes less dangerous to use, all the while keeping the pleasure without major health risks. But how successful is the e-cigarette as an aid to quitting smoking? Although there have been few studies so far, it's estimated that about 1 in 20 managed to stop smoking. The majority continue to vape while reducing their cigarette consumption. But it's not for everyone, as Pascal Picard acknowledges. Having tried for over a month, she's gone back to smoking. I think I don't really want to quit. For me, smoking a cigarette's a real pleasure. Maybe that's why I'm not very motivated. But what is worrying is the young people, adolescents. There are a lot who've started using the electronic cigarette. We haven't had enough time yet to say whether there are any risks, any illnesses like with tobacco. Even me, when I started to smoke cigarettes, we didn't yet know about all the risks. The risk is that the electronic cigarette will be used as a gateway into smoking or tobacco use. And it's worrying to see that on a global level, some of the biggest cigarette manufacturers are buying up e-cigarette brands, not to encourage smokers to switch, but to recruit new consumers. And they'll see it in front of the camera that they want to recruit the young because they know that for the market to be profitable, they have to get the adolescents addicted. The European Parliament is set to vote on the tobacco directive in March. Then, member states will have two years to decide how they want to legislate the e-cigarette in their country. But many smokers desperate to quit hope the substitute Segui revolution will not be stubbed out by Europe's politicians.